Today we're going to be looking at navigating Google Docs, general organization and features. Content covered in this video includes creating and organizing a Google Doc and some common use features found in the toolbar section. Let's get started. First, we're going to take a look at three different ways that you can create a Google Doc. From the Google Apps icon, we can open this up and select the Google Docs icon. This will create a blank Google Doc that will later be found in your general drive folder. It's kind of like taking out a sheet of paper and just starting to write on it. You can select from a number of templates, but most of the time you're probably going to use blank. Your second option is to go through Google Drive using the same toolbar as before. When you go through Google Drive, you can select the specific folder you want to organize your Google Doc into. Then you can click the Create icon on the top left and select Google Doc. This ensures that you know where to find your document afterwards and is a great tool for if you're going to be working on a document for a long period of time. Your third option is to create a Google Doc directly on an assignment where you need one. You can do this by hitting the Add or Create icon on the top right of your assignment and from the drop down menu, select Docs. By doing this, you create your doc directly in your Google Classroom folder. Now, this is kind of like stuffing everything into a big binder over time, and it's a little less organized than the Google Drive method. However, it does save time as you don't need to attach this doc later on when you go to hand in an assignment. So now that you've created your assignment, you're going to notice that up at the top, it says Untitled Document. You want to select this area and give your document a name. If you use the Google Classroom method, it'll automatically name the document the name of the assignment with your name at the beginning. This is sometimes sufficient, but you may decide to go in and change this anyways. Once you've done that, you can click on the very top of the page underneath the toolbar. This will activate the header. This is where you're going to put the actual title of your document. Remember, if you have to print this, or if this was being handed in on paper, you would need a title. So you're going to put a lot of the information that Google collects anyways, including the name of your assignment, your name, and the date. In this example, we're putting the date in on the top line of the header on the right-hand side. But you can organize this however your class decides to organize titles, names, and dates. Now that the header is done, we're going to click outside of the header space to the top of the page. This will start us off at the top line margin area. This is where you can now begin typing your body text. Now, in this example, we're not going to type any body text. We're going to take a look next at the toolbar options up at the top. There's two layers to our toolbar. There's the toolbar closest to your actual page, and then there's the file toolbar up at the top. We're going to look at the bottom toolbar first. The first two icons are the undo and redo icons, which allow you to go backwards and forwards to different edits that you've created on the page. Pretty much any time there's a notable pause, that's selected by Docs as an edit. And so when you click back, it'll go back to the pause previous to that. After that, there's spell check, print, and backgrounds followed by the zoom in and out feature, which allows you to adjust the overall size of your page on your screen. After that, we have our fonts. Font size is first, uh, though this is only really helpful if you're gonna use the presets of header and title sizes that Docs it sets for you. Font after that allows you to select from a variety of fonts. Most of the time you're likely gonna be using Arial, or Times New Roman. After that is font size, where you can adjust the size of your text outside of those presets that you find uh, to the left. And then after that are the text, uh, highlight text options. So this includes bolding text, italicizing text, underlining text, changing text to color, and highlighting text. These can all be done very quickly by highlighting the words that you want to change and quickly selecting them or learning the keyboard shortcuts so you don't even have to go up to this toolbar later on. 
The next four icons all focus on aligning your paragraphs in your body in different ways. So either aligning them on the left margin, aligning them on the center, aligning them in the right margin, etc. After that, we have line spacing, so the distance between one line and the line underneath it. And finally, uh, bullets, which is updated recently to include checkable checkboxes. So if we write out an example here, we can put in some different pieces of information in a checkbox, and these checkboxes are actually clickable. If you're uh, the owner of the document or in editor mode, you can go ahead and click those. If you don't want checkboxes, there's a variety of other bullet and arrow options that you can use to create lists. Finally, the last two icons you're going to use uh, involve changing your indent, and so you can change your indent forwards and backwards. The last one, clear formatting, uh, only uh, is usable if you have a lot of custom formatting things on your Google Doc, which is unlikely. Now that we've gone ahead and taken a look at the lower toolbar, up on the top right, the blue icon share will allow you to share uh, your document with other people. This is not the same as handing in an assignment. This only gives access to people who you want to either view your document or edit your document. Okay, you can use the present icon right next to share uh, as kind of a quick way. If you're in a Google Meet, you can just click this and it'll uh, present to the people in the Google Meet that you're in. Over in the upper toolbar near file, there's a whole bunch of features. We're not going to go through all of them, but here are just a couple of important ones. Uh, you can download your document onto your computer in a variety of formats. You can also check your editing history. And this is important because if people are making changes on the same document, this allows you to see exactly who changed what at what time. From file, you can also access the move icon. This is available in a little folder button next to the name of your document. And this allows you uh, to move your document into different folders so you can find it later. And at the bottom, there's page setup. And this allows you to adjust your margins as well as change your document from portrait to landscape. And if you're using a printer, you can also adjust the size of the page. So if uh, you were printing something off and you don't want it to be letter sized or standard size page, you can change it to something else. There are a variety of features up in this upper uh, toolbar. Some of them are repeats of the lower toolbar, and we'll, go, we'll be going over some of them in more detail in future videos. And that's it. This has been Navigating Google Docs, General Organization and Features. Content covered in this video included creating and organizing a Google Doc, as well as some of the common use features found in the upper toolbar.